Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we're out in the western suburbs, and I'm with Dave. Dave, good to see you. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Lou. Now, I met Dave in a, a car show out at Gilbert's, Illinois, and when I saw his car, well, I figured I should share it with you. Dave, what did we bring today? Uh, 1962 Bel Air bubble top 409, 409. 409 cubic inches, 409, 409 horsepower. horsepower. Correct. So let's take a look right off the bat at our featured attraction. Come right alongside me, Dave. And how long have you had this one? Five years, Lou. So we're looking at your car you've had for five years. Now I want to kind of put people in the mindset here. We're talking 1962. So let's think about that for a second. There is no Mustang. There, right. There is no Camaro. So at this point, the 409, well, this, and I'm getting to the side of it, is the big dog. So when we're at the big dog section, how was this doing on the drag strip? Yeah, in 1960, well, Chevrolet came out with a big block, the 348, in 1958. Uh, it did well on drag strips as well. But in 1962, with the 409 cubic inch big block, uh, as well as 409 horsepower, it was the king on, on most drag strips. Uh, turning low 13s, in some cases high 12 seconds for uh, a quarter mile. So now, of course, you know, when you think of the muscle car, you think of the GTO, but in 64, the GTO came out, and I just love the stance of what you got. I'm going to try to show that from a rim wise. Here's your tire here with and there's your tire up front maybe I can do that a little bit in reverse now one thing that stands out on this car is this exhaust so tell me what's happening here we've got one in front of the tail and one sticking out underneath okay originally these the pipes that you see in front of the back tire might have come straight out the rear of the car. I've seen them both ways. The lake pipe, as it's called, up in front, or I'm sorry, in the rear of the front tire, they opened that up when they raced and bypassed the muffler because most of these cars were not run with headers. When they started using headers on them, then they got away from that. So this is pretty much on there to be period correct. And the all-important 409. Now I'll show you. Let's let's open the trunk. We've got a few trunk and treats. And in this one, well, look how clean this wide trunk is. Lots of cargo room. Really nice. <laughs> a great little piece there. So was this car restored, Dave, or what was the status? When I bought it five years ago, uh, it needed to be repainted. Uh, we pulled the motor, which was solid, and detailed the motor. Took it to a uh, gentleman in Elgin, Illinois, Mark Nordmeyer his name is, and he stripped the paint and totally took it down to bare metal and gave it a step-by-step -step complete restoration as far as paint. Uh, there is no Bondo, no rust on the car whatsoever. Wow. This, uh, so the, uh, and it is the original color. It it's, hasn't been changed. What, what is it? What was the color? Yeah, I, 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 I never can pronounce it right. It's an ermine white. Er, ermine white? I think yeah, you said it perfectly. Yeah, I think that's the way it's called. But that's, right. We'll close that and we'll go to our front of the car. Just looks wonderful. Let me show the front. Really, really the race car of the day. Yes, it was. I mean, just it's just that simple. Let's take a look under the hood, shall we? Uh, 
That's wonderful. The dual snorkel air cleaner indicates that it was a, a dual quad. There's, there are two Carter AFB carburetors that are original to the car. Uh, and you can always tell that it's a dual quad car because of the, the dual snorkel air cleaner. That's the tip off. Yeah. So when people saw that, that was the kind of the ah moment. And the only change really under the hood is since we kept drum brakes on the car, we put a dual bowl master cylinder just for safety purposes. So it used to be a single. Single, which I still have, but we uh, yeah. felt more comfortable safety wise with. those dual carburetors. It still has the original 35 amp generator. Mm -hmm. This is the Sun TAC transmitter box. I'm going to stand right on the side so I can actually look at that from the top so that people can it's read Sun that. Transmitter box. I think originally those were totally inverted. In other words, where the wires are on the top would have been on the bottom. But because of the plumbing here for the dual bowl master cylinder, we just flipped it up. It was easy to flip it over. Flip it over. Yeah. It, it performs the same feature. It operates the tack. Now we are going to start it up, but let me take a look at the interior of the car. And we've got... Several colors going on here. You can even see the three different colors there. We have our Chevrolet tag there. That looks very day two, which means that is the original tag. The original tag. Yes. Chevy came with the tag. Well, it, it, it did not have it, uh, it was an after, you had to buy it after the fact. But right. This is what they ran on these cars. But that looks like the correct yes. kind of time frame, day yes. two tech. Well, it, right. is, it is the correct one. Yeah. yeah. So you got the big bench seat. Uh -huh. And actually lots of room. Look at the back window. <laughs> the very tiny pillars. It's a very basic interior because the Impala had the more luxurious uh, interior with some of them with bucket seats and consoles and so forth, but this was not designed for that. The only gauges are on it and are the oil pressure and water temperature. Mm -hmm. And even those look uh, somewhat a little more older like the Yeah, they're period correct. Yeah, and we've got the uh, the glove. This has, this has an AM radio in it that still still works. Some of the guys ordered these cars out, what they called radio delete, where there would not have been a radio in it, which would make it just a little bit lighter yet. And the, the glove box, obviously, right in the center there, yes. which is a little unique, too, because usually it would be over by the passenger. Your heater buttons. And then over on the far side, I'll share that. The emblem right there. And even how you can see the door kind of wraps around there, having that wrap around lining to it. Right. Really cool. Well, it's time to uh, let's fire it up, shall we? And we'll let it we'll let it idle here.
down? That's a lot of fun. <laughs> you can see why it was the big dog, right? Oh yeah, yeah, they were they were quick. So what's the reaction, uh, Dave? What was the reaction when you're driving this car? How do people uh, respond to it? Oh, you just get all kinds of looks, especially if you're in my generation. You know, the you know, funny thing is, you go to car shows. And a lot of younger people look for chrome. They look for things that people have added onto their cars, and that's wonderful. That's yeah. what they enjoy. But when you get to a place where someone who is 70 years old in that era, yeah. you know, or maybe even older, I'm 77, uh, you really, they, they're the people that appreciate this car. They get it. I took it to Florida. We have a home down there, and I took it down there two winters ago. Yeah. Went to a lot of car shows. A uh, couple of at drag strips down there, and you get a lot of old-fashioned gearheads who are down there vacationing, and it drew a lot of attention. You see, you see 409s on a pretty regular basis, but you don't see many, many bubble tops. That's what separates the car, I think. It's a good question. How many do you see that are bubble tops? You don't. Uh, I, I haven't seen any this summer here at all. Uh, a couple of car shows I've been to. There's, a, you'll see a, a gal's got a Lesabre. Yeah. You know, I've seen that. Uh, I haven't. I saw a '61 uh, here a while ago, but you'll see Impalas, '62 Impalas, which were nice, nice yeah. cars. They're just, they're just different, you know. So, so question for you: it, um, This car has not been videoed before, correct? It has not. So, people who are on the channel, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, click the like button. Dave, what a treat. I'm looking forward to seeing the reaction to your car. Thanks for being on my car story. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, Dave, here we are driving in the bubble top. Tell me, uh, how do you like driving it? Oh, it's just, if you've never driven one, you don't understand. I mean, it's just so much different than anything that we have today. You know, it's just, uh, I have a 2011 Camaro with a 6.2 LS motor in it. Yeah. And it's fun to drive, but it's not near as much fun as this is. <laughs> let's see, let's get a little, little sound out of this one. <laughs> yeah, we'll up here, right? So a uh, instant friend maker, this one. <laughs> yeah. So when you, when you had this car, you knew you wanted this one. Where did you see it? How did it all happen? Actually, a, a young guy that we know uh, who goes to car shows happened to know the guy that owned it, and uh, which I didn't know the guy. Yeah. And he'd had it for 10 or 12 years uh, in a heated garage and was going to do to it what I ended up doing to it. In other words, the paint and, and all the things that made it made it right. Uh, the motor had been redone, so uh, that was good. And he just had other interests, I guess, and decided he wanted to move on, and they're, they're hard to find, uh, especially one that's, that you can work with, you know, where the body's straight. And so it was kind of a lucky find, and everything worked good. Let's see if we give it some gas here. That's about five gallons of gas right there. <laughs> that's smiles to the gallon, by the way. Yeah. Smiles to the gallon. Yeah, that's an issue, too, nowadays, trying to find fuel. What do you put in this thing? Well, and I don't know if I need to or not. Uh, I run the highest octane I can buy, 93, and then I add at least five or six, seven gallons, sometimes ten gallons of 110 leaded racing fuel. Yeah. Expensive, but I think that it makes the car run better. So you wouldn't want to do that if you were going to drive the car a lot of miles. But I don't, so I'm not really concerned about the little extra cost for the fuel. Right. The, 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 the miles, the smiles per gallon. Yes, but I think it's the the way today's fuel burns differently than what. This car was used to in 1962. So. Yeah. 
but I love the fact that you drive it and oh, yeah. we get the chance to, like we just did right there, share it and enjoy it. No, I try to take it out at least once or twice a week and go someplace. Well, Dave, what a treat. Thanks again for being on the channel. I'm looking forward to seeing the reaction. No, I appreciate it. Thanks so much for, for doing what you did. Thank you.